Hello, what's up guys? I'm here with you again with another tutorial about PX4 Autopilot development topics. In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can send your custom values. They can be anything, sensor data or any other arbitrary value to your ground station and log it on your SD card. You can send it to a ground station via Mavlink protocol. I haven't seen any tutorials about it in YouTube or any other web page except for the PX4 development website so I decided to be the first one to record the video about it. It's relatively an advanced topic but it's not very hard to follow because there's, there's very good documentation and easy to use and ready to use example here in uh, PX4 development sections but you will need to have a good understanding about uh, different topics. For example, YORP. YORP is an asynchronous publish and subscribe messaging API that let different kind, different modules inside your piece work talk to each other. They can share data and share value with each other. And Mavlink is a protocol between your vehicle and ground station or any other vehicle. So don't mess up these two together. YORP is inside your hardware with different kind of modules. But Mavlink is your vehicle with another vehicle or ground station. Each of the data that can be shared inside your uh, autopilot is called a topic and each topic can be uh, advertised, published and accessed through different uh, modules. All the topics, default topics are available here inside your firmware and a folder called MSG. Some names may be familiar for you. For example, let's see the easiest one which is Airspeed. And they all have a suffix that MSG. There is a UN64 time stamps, the time in microseconds, there is a float for indicated airspeed, true airspeed, and air temperature uh, Celsius, and confidence. And everything is auto-generated. For example, when you create a new topic here and add a rule to the CMake files, all the relative uh, C++ codes and functions and structures auto-generated for you. So you, you only need to understand what is happening. You don't need to do anything. You just have to understand what is happening here. And a very good documentation is available here. It's tell you what to do when you want to add a new topic, for example. You have to uh, uh, enter the name of the new topic in the CMake rules as well. And there's very good documentation about what is publishing, for example. For example, here we want to publish the York data through Mavlink to ground the station. This is called publishing, for example, here. And there is other concepts such as advertising and so on. I'm not going to go deep inside them and also I'm not very expert, I'm just starting to learn these things. You can go ahead and read the documentation in this website. Okay, now uh, we are not going to write any line of code here. We're just going to use uh, a ready-to-use example here. Make sure you have uh, you have uh, cloned the uh, PX4 uh, and successfully build the firmware by yourself, not QGround code. You have to build it by yourself. If you haven't, you can go ahead and watch my tutorials about software in the loop simulation and hardware in the loop simulation. Okay, let's come back to the example. In the MSG folder, there are four, already four messages, four topics. That's uh, it's relative to our example, the example that we're going to use. For example, this one is debug array.msg. There's a timestamp. There is an ID, there is name, a character array of name and a value, for example. And this one is debug key underscore value. And this one, for example, has a timestamp, has a key name and has a value of float. This should be already in your firmware. I haven't created anything. And this one is a val uh, single value, single float value. And this one is a vector, for example, x, y, and z, and a name and a timestamp. And everything is done for you. Everything is ready, and also the CMake rules are created for these messages, topics. Okay, next step is that we come to firmware, to the source directory, and for example, to the examples. And there is a folder here called pix for map link debug. Just open it and open the CPP files. And this is everything, all the magic is happening inside this folder.
I'm not going deep inside. I'm not going to go very deep inside the codes, but I'm just going to show you some concepts. These are the include ones. Some of them are familiar for you, such as SCDIO and so on. But after that, we have included the georg.h and different topics that we're going to use. Deep, uh, remember the names: debug key underscore value, debug key underscore value dot h, and the vector and the array. Okay, uh, and each module should have a main function, and the name is important. This is the module name underscore main, and the name is important here. And then we just do a print of hello debug to make sure that uh, in the console to say that our module has started. And this uh, and here it's a little hard to follow, but uh, spend some time with that and find what is happening. For example, this is a structure debug underscore key underscore value underscore s. This is an auto generated structure for us. When we just create an object of that, we call it dbg underscore key. When, cre when we created the topic, this structure is auto generated for us. Remember the key and just try to learn the name conventions here. There's underscore s. It means a structure. And we create an object of that and we assign a name to that you can see it this is the same for all three other topics for example and we assign a key a string of key remember the dbg key uh, has three parameters had a key id or value or timestamps right now we're going to change the dot key parameters to well x if you have forget these things you can go, uh, just go ahead to the message and the definition of the topic For example, the debug key value, you see there's a timestamp, there's a key a string and a value. So we're going to change the key here. So we say dbg key dot key. Don't mess up this two key together. The second one means the parameters. And then the dbg key dot value, we initialize it with zero because it's a float. We put f at the end of that. And the same for three other topics. For example, for the vector, you see we assign a name well3D and x, y, z, and we assign one, two, three. And then we have to advertise it. And this, uh, these are the same name conventions as I told you. Debug key value is the name of the topic. DBG key is, this, uh, is the structure that we have created. And we are going to advertise it. And we get a key handler. We call it its type of or advertisement and we call it dbg uh, public dbg uh, publish dbg key we just make it sure to be pop dbg key these names are arbitrary some of them are arbitrary but uh, just spend some time to learn what's happening and everything is the same for these four different topics for example this one dbg array the name and then we advertise it with the dbg array structure after that, this is everything. Uh, this is the uh, the code that generates the values. This part of the code can be thousands of line of codes. This can be connecting with different sensors. This can be some uh, many calculations here. But right now we have a while loop here, and we change the uh, value based on each iteration to make sure that the value is being transmitted. Remember the dbg key dbg underscore key dot value. We change the value to the value of the iteration of the loop and the timestamps to the current timestamps of this hardware and then we publish it orb underscore publish and we have the orb id of our structure and we uh, use the key handler for publishing and the dbg underscore key is our structure the object of our structure and everything is the same for three other topics and for example, for the indexed one, we put the value to be half 0.5 multiplied by the iteration loop. And the third one, for example, we have the one multiplied by iteration loop two and three for the x, y, and z. And we assign the timestamps in microseconds as well. And then we publish it just the same as the other. Uh, as I told you, just spend some time to understand the name conventions here. It's not so hard. It's maybe com uh, look complicated for the first time, but it's not. When you spend maybe one hour watching this and seeing these variable names, 
everything will be clear for you very straightforward and very good documentation inside the px4 website and as you can see you can correlate correlate the names with the topic name example for example this is our advertising key handler and this is our structure name and we pass the reference address of our structure here you should have a good understanding of c++ everything is c++ here so if you know the topics for structure for object oriented programming and pointers everything is clear for you here and there's no need to description more details and the same thing for the array we can see all the cells of the array is being fit with a constant multiplied by the iteration value of the loop and after that we just print a warning that we have sent the value and we set to the px4 that to this thread of the px4 to wait for 15 500,000 microseconds and a half of a second and then the while loop happens again it means we are going to send this value in two hertz and that's it that's everything that's happening inside this code this code can be 2000 lines based on your uh, project but right now it's just a simple while loop okay uh, right now this example is available in our firmware but we haven't created we haven't built that yet we haven't enabled it yet to enable uh, and let the piece for know that we're going to use this uh, module and this example we have to go to the uh, board and build rules if you're going to use software in the loop just go to the software in the loop page but i'm going to build it for an old psych one so i'm going to use fmu dash version 2. you you should select the folder based on your own version and just go ahead on the bottom of the page and just is enable just uh, remove this asterisk sign from the module then that we are going to enable it that's it and save the file and come to your terminal and navigate the piece of firmware directory now uh, you should build your firmware first connect your pixel board to your computer and make sure it's connected if you haven't done the make and building procedure definitely you will face with many errors but uh, be patient and all of them will be solved if you are going to build it for software in the loop type piece for underscore software in the loop but i'm going to build it for piece for underscore fmu v2 underscore default fmu dash v2 is the old pixel one so make sure what board you are going to build for and it's starting to build if it's your first time that is being built it might time it might take a long time but for me because i've already built several times uh, many of the libraries are available and ready and everything will be happening fast remember you might face with many lost. errors here Manual flight mode. Communication regained. Communication remember lost. to close the kill ground control so it won't have interruption while it's building the code uh, you may have uh, found it many errors and you uh, it might uh, not be the way that's happening very great and great words here you might found it uh, with different kind of errors because mm, it's mm, relatively uh, troubling procedure if that happens uh, go ahead and watch uh, search for documentation inside ps4 and follow the procedure in my videos in my last videos and, and the links are available in the comment section below and also you can refer to the ps4 development section a good uh, solution that sometimes work is just update your submodules. You can type git submodule update dash dash recursive. After a submodule updated, do a make this clean to clean everything and do the building again. This should uh, work most of the times, but if it didn't, just go ahead and refer to documentation. Uh, it will be fixed, <laughs> but you need to be patient. Okay. The code is now uploaded and we can open QGround Control. But there is there is topic here. The new version of QGround Qgr Control, which is version four, has it's very. I don't understand why they have removed the option to have the live plots and the analyze sections. And so as I told you in the last tutorials, I'm going to use the version 3.5.6. Any version after 3.5.6, they have removed the live plotting feature. 
So you don't, uh, you won't see this uh, toolbar Old up here, mode. this file widget. So Blending make sure you're required. using this version for this tutorial. Okay, we come to widgets to analyze to have the live plot of the Mavlink packets. Okay, right now we don't see our data here. So what's wrong here? Don't worry, we haven't done anything wrong, but we haven't activated the module yet. We, uh, there's two methods. You can auto enable the, uh, the modules or you, you enable it manually using Mavlink console. Go to your Mavlink console and type the name of your module. What was the name of our module? It was the Mavlink debug. To make sure the name come to the source examples and copy and paste this pix4 underscore mavlink underscore debug. Copy the name. You can add it to the startup function and it will always start automatically. Just type the name here and as you can see it has started and says hello debug and it's starting every one second two packet is uh, being sent and if you search inside this inside here you will find our values here here this is the vector for example well3d.x well3d.y and well3d.z you can just click the tick uh, the checkbox and you will see the live plot and you can log independently this value other values are available here such as uh, dbg array data there was 58 data uh, and all the all other data that we initialized and we're changing the value you can you have access to all of them here you can see them individually or you can log it here very straightforward right now we have created a new data it can be anything it can be a new sensor or it can be an estimation of for example wind or any other components on on your vehicle and we are sending the value to our ground station this is very great this is just a demonstration but you can do many things about this if you have difficulties with the concepts and downloading cloning and access a peaceful framework i have some tutorials about this you can go ahead and watch the tutorials in my channel and before ending this tutorials, I want to refer to the last tutorial that I uploaded a few hours ago. It's about the login. It's about uh, logging yeah, your person. specific, your custom data to the still log. This is exactly what we can do here. Just go ahead and uh, watch this video. The link is available in the top section right now. Uh, with this method, you can easily publish the new created topics that we have created right now. For example, dvg underscore key or dvg vector you can uh, log those value at the real time with very high rate on your vehicle on your sd card just uh, just you need to copy the name of the one that you want for example dvg underscore vector or any of the name copy the name to the associated file in the sd card and just enable the logger and it will be logged for you i'm not going to go through that because i have already explained the procedure exactly on the last uh, video tutorials if you have any uh, question or anything uh, that you don't understand just again i tell you go ahead and watch my last tutorials about pix4 especially for the software in the loop and hardware in the loop the one that uh, the title is pix4 software in the loop and ardu pilot from 0 to 100 in one hour if you watch that tutorials uh, you will understand most of the topics about the PX4 software in the loop, making and building procedures, and everything becomes clear for you. And you can also refer to the PX4 the documentation. And always remember, my tutorials are recorded here, August 2020, 2020, and while COVID-19 pan pandemic. Uh, for example, if you are watching these tutorials, maybe one or two years before, after this time. Uh, many things could have been changed many libraries many module names many dependencies so always refer to the pix4 development section and just don't follow my instruction everything uh, might have been changed while you are watching while you are doing this tutorial okay i hope uh, this video could have helped you uh, please let me know what, uh, what are your ideas for the next tutorials what uh, what do you think what 
uh, what's your recommendation for the next tutorials and if you have any question please leave it uh, in the comment section below and remember to like and subscribe if you don't want to miss the next tutorials about PX4 autopilots thanks for watching good luck with coding and flying